Welcome to the Sweet Subversives Podcast. And it's live. No! live. <laughs> it's alive. It's not Memrex. Oh it's live. No. Are you sure? <laughs> no. Maybe. Is this a really weird dream? It could be. I don't know. But it's a super subversive, and I think we're here having a really weird dream together. So join yeah. us in our yeah. dreamland. Join join us and have weird dreams with us. Yes. Very weird. I'm going to turn off our name so it's not right in the way. There we go. I like that better. It looks cleaner, right? Clean is good. So how are you doing, Kara? Good. Good. It's, you know, it was a really busy day, but um, a semi-productive day. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. It was a very productive day for me, and I'm like, whoa. We're we're doing all this back-to-school stuff. Zoom meetings up the wazoo. I'm Zoomed out, but, you know, it's it's just... Oh, I got to tell you, like, okay, I'll share this with everyone. Like yesterday I was in a Zoom meeting for so long, I forgot I was on a Zoom meeting. And I was just kind of like listening. It's almost like listening to a podcast where you're like doing something. <laughs> like I got my like food in front of me. I'm eating, 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 <laughs> eating. And I'm like, oh, I got to blow my nose now because I ate all this greasy food. I'm blowing my nose. And, and then I just kind of look up and there on the corner of my eye, I see myself on one of the little camera things on the side where you see all the people and you see yourself. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I was doing that on the zoom meeting the whole time. At least I wasn't like effing with my top or something, you know, like people be like, <laughs> like what you doing, Heather? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Well, we have a, we have a staff meeting every morning for LP staff and, um, they like you to have your camera on, but but I almost never have my camera on. And so they're like, Oh, you know, we would like to you to have your camera on. I'm like, well, here's the thing with my morning schedule. I do work in the morning and then I take a shower and then I hit the morning meeting and I am getting dressed. (laughs) During yeah, the morning I'm meeting. multitasking because it's so right. it's early in my day. So, so no, I'm not gonna turn my camera on. Yeah, it's not a free show. Like you gotta pay extra for the, like seeing the right. show. <laughs> well they might honestly, pay extra to not see the show. They, they probably would to go like uh here's twenty. Just don't do that again. <laughs> Well, in all my day today is every time I had to get on camera, my cat would jump up on the screen and he'd like, like yep. look at me. He'd be like, what are you talking about? No. And then every once in a while he'd put his ass like right in front of the camera and I'm like, nah, nah, and he'd jump back up and jump back up. So I'm just surprised right now. He's probably, he's zoomed out too. Yeah. He's, he's zoomed not, out. He's tired, man. He's, like, he's been on Zoom all day too. She's like, she never stops. She just on yeah. over. I've been doing my best. <laughs> so y- you pre-gamed. Yes. What did you pre-game with? Um, well, I had a little wine earlier and then I got, uh, got kind of tired. I switched to cider and then I got tired of that because it's so sweet. And then now I've, I've switched to like a uh, summery beer. So I'm like doing a, that. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I was self-medicating uh, from all the Zoom, but I, can I think it's okay. That. I feel good. I, I mean, I didn't. I'm not doing any like anything hard. No hard alcohol or any of that. But I am mass quantities. I know. Like it sometimes. It's I my first. I I still I have this one um like a Moscow Mule thing that I, oh, I really yeah. wanted, and I was like almost yeah. going to do it. I was going to save it for tomorrow when I'm not zooming. Cause I feel like it's so tasty and good that I kind of want it on a day when I'm just like needing it and wanting refreshment instead of like at the tail end of all my shitty drinks, you know, oops, <laughs> you know, like towards the end, you don't appreciate it. You want the good stuff like right up. Right. Front. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, uh-huh. so I, I'm actually, I was still thinking about that, but I'm like, uh, I'm going to drink, I'm going to drink, some of the beer that we have, we have mass quantities of summer beer. So yeah. 
Yeah. It'll be fine. <laughs> so I, I'm doing a rum and coke, but I, so, and I'm not a big rum and coke person. Like that's oh, never wow. been a drink that I ever drink. Um, but I bought this, this particular type of rum for when we did our tiki drinks when we went camping. Oh yeah. And I loved it so much that, yeah, I will totally do a rum and coke with this. So, so where is Oakheart from? That looks, re- I, I so had it. It's from Bacardi. Bacardi, okay. Yeah, I was but like, it doesn't taste like Bacardi, um, and it also doesn't taste like what's that shitty spice rum that everyone gets? Captain Morgan's. That's Captain right. Morgan's. I don't like that, like that either. So it tastes. Um, it has a little bit of a like a smoky char. Oh, I like to that. It, but also like a warmed vanilla flavor too. I think we should talk about tiki drinks. I don't know. I'm just like randomly like, I mean, since we're talking about delicious drinks, you know, like rum in, is like the best in, in tiki drinks. Yes. And, and I, um, I think there's a huge resurgence of delicious tiki drinks coming around our country. And yeah. um, like Kara is the the drink master. If, if, if you guys haven't already figured it out, you should. Um, she makes these awesome syrups that go into oh, cocktails and they're God. so good so i've had tiki drinks but i've never made tiki drinks because they're kind of a pain in the butt and they have a lot of different ingredients to them mm-hmm. i mean you are it's not like just two or three things that you're throwing in there so i made a zombie mm-hmm. and first of all it has three different kinds of rum in it oh hi jared so it has three different kinds of rum in it um, it has a like a regular, you know, white rum. It has a dark rum, and then oh, it has a spiced rum in it. So you've got three shots already in in one drink, which is why it's called a zombie. Um, <laughs> and then it has a mix of juices, um, so orange juice and pineapple juice, a little yeah. bit of lime juice, um, and then a tiny bit of juice from like the maraschino cherry oh can. like the yeah kind of like grenadine yeah, something yeah. Like that. but you can use grenadine but like i hate grenadine so yeah, they so said sweet. use that instead because it's way better and i'm like yes it is but then it's got two syrups in it that you need to make one you can buy it as a liqueur but i was like you know there's already enough alcohol in this there's drink let's, in that. <laughs> let's do it as a simple syrup and so this syrup had um ginger lemon peel and allspice Mm. and so that's what you you steeped it in to make that one okay and then the other simple syrup that i made was a like you crushed up cinnamon sticks and used that to make the simple syrup oh man so like all of that is going into one drink and then of course you got to garnish it with like wedges of wedges of orange and the cherries and yeah beautiful glass huge (laughs) <laughs> like a bowl or like yeah. a big coconut shell. But I would definitely do that again. And I would also do that simple syrup again. I would just put it in club soda. I mean, it was so good. It was delicious. Um, I do think that all the rum can really knock you on your butt, but um, it's tasted like fruit juice, you know, yeah. with a little bit of burn. <laughs> yes. Well, we do have, we do have news today. We have news. Yes, we do. We have lots of news. Yes. So, okay. So let's do a quick ballot access update. Um, I think we have 43 states plus DC certified. Mm. So we've had them certified by the Secretary of State in those states. Um, we have a couple other states where we have submitted and we're waiting for the certification. So I think... Maryland, we're still waiting for certification. Tennessee, we're still waiting for certification. I think Wisconsin certified. Mm -hmm. Um, Just three hours ago, I think three hours ago, Alabama certified. So Alabama is now certified. Um, New Hampshire, their signature collection is down, but they're doing the by town verifications. So we're waiting on that. Uh, Iowa their drive is completed. Everything is handed in Minnesota. We completed our drive yesterday was the deadline, but we handed them in on Monday. Good. Um, so the two that are outstanding where they're still collecting 
signatures and I don't believe they have hit their number yet is number oh. one, Virginia, and their deadline is Friday. Friday. So, Friday. Yep. Whoa. So, mm. and then the other one is Rhode Island and their deadline is September 4th. Now oh, I think Virginia really? is close right now. I think they're either close or they're, they're at the point where they're trying to get over and above to get buffers. Um, just like Minnesota, ours was 2000, but we collected 2,700 to make sure, right. You know, right. States know they have to go through that. Uh, we have candidates, individual candidates who are being challenged. Um, and many of them are making it through their challenges. So some Colorado candidates have made it through their challenge. So congratulations to them. Um, we have a Pennsylvania candidate who is being challenged right now. Uh, Liz Terwilliger. Yeah. I hope I'm getting her name right. My apologies if I just totally screwed that up. So, um, but she's a congressional candidate and her papers have been challenged. Now she needed to get 900 signatures, I believe is, is the threshold on that. And I believe they turned in 2100. Oh, if wow. I remember right. Um, and I may have those numbers incorrect, but, but yes, yes. And we're going to be getting to that Jared on the LNC where we're having the meeting. Um, so the challenge, which this is laughable, the highlights of the challenge are, well, she can't possibly have collected 900 signatures by herself during a pandemic. And then another one challenge is, well, is her name Liz or Elizabeth? What the hell? Whatever. <laughs> so they're trying to, they're trying to challenge line by line on those petitions. So we'll see. Um, she Ooh. is um, raising money and Pennsylvania is raising money right now for the legal challenge that they're going to be facing. So good luck to them and good luck on their fundraising. And hopefully they can win those challenges. Uh, we had a big legal victory in New Mexico. Ooh. So we had a libertarian party member, uh, Stephen Curtis, and he was running for court of appeals um, and how he needed to get on the ballot I know every state has weird ballot stuff for yeah, libertarians. The hoops they make us jump through are crazy. To get on, what he would have to do is he would have to get on as a write-in candidate in the primary so that he could appear on the ballot in the general. That is so odd. So he had to do two things. File his paperwork on, a, on only one day between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So oh. again, they're making it difficult. Yeah. And had to get 230 write-in votes on yeah. primary day. And of course, you know, what they do to challenge those is, um, oh, you know, the writing wasn't leg legible. Oh, they misspelled the name, you know, so they try to knock them off, right? So they had 1,500 or so libertarians cast ballots, um, but the Secretary of State said, you know, only 204 of them were write-ins for Curtis. And that completely was not correct because what they showed is different counties started to show zero votes for him. Right. Yeah. And they knew that that was not true. And so they started to check with those counties and the counties are like, Oh, well, we just didn't bother counting them. <laughs> we didn't bother counting the write-ins. Well, um, they're the ones who are breaking the, the rules. So the LP <laughs> sued and they got affidavits together from voters they had to get county officials who would testify, all this kind of stuff. So they did it. And then on Monday, the judge said, yep, absolutely, that candidate is on the ballot. He made that threshold. Yeah. Uh, and, and I will tell you that reading um, what that judge wrote was scathing towards the Secretary of State. Scathing. Good. <laughs> so, yes. And then now we can get to... A fun yeah. bit of news for Heather and I. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. This so, is really exciting. <laughs> the LP, so the um, Libertarian National Committee, right. is coming to Minnesota for the very first time. Yay! So they're going to be holding their quarterly meeting in Minnesota, which Heather and I are excited about because we yeah. love to play host and we can't wait for you guys to get here. There's fun yeah, things to do. We're going to have a fantastic time. Um, so, yes. Book your flights. Get here. So it'll be um, September 12th and 13th is the meeting, which is a Saturday and Sunday. But 
come Thursday night or come Friday morning, because what Minnesota is doing, um, we have a candidate who is running for mayor who is a libertarian. And so what we're going to do is um, from four o'clock until seven o'clock, we're going to do door knocking for him. Right. And we're going to hit it hard because September 17th, yay, Jared's flight is booked because September know. 17th is when... Um, people get their ballots in Minnesota. So that's when early voting by mail starts. So we're going to do that final, final push on field ops. Um, We're going to have the LNC joining us, um, Minnesota party (laughs) members, all community members in the, in the town. We're going to be doing a big door knocking day. And then at seven, we'll head to the candidate's house who is Chris Klebeter and his mom is cooking and she is amazing. So Woo-hoo! I'm hungry. And so we are going to chow down on a cookout and barbecue and all kinds of sides. And, you know, there'll be um, delicious things to drink. And then at eight o'clock, a comedian is coming to perform for all of us. So Yay! it's going to be a very fun night. Oh, my God. This sounds amazing. I didn't even know about the yeah. comedian. I'm like, what? And there's more? And there's more. So yeah, I'm super excited. I feel like we won the lottery. This is amazing. I know, I know. And I am very excited because um, I love so many people on the LNC. And so I get to see them because many of them I didn't get to see at the, at the um, national convention. That's right. But now you will. Now I will. So yes, I'm very excited. So. Oh my God. I'm I'm super excited too. Yeah. I, when I heard, I was just like, oh, "No way! <laughs> We're gonna have so much fun." I so, love it. Thank you to the LNC for voting to host your quarterly meeting in Minneapolis. Very excited. Will runzas be available? Ooh, oh. Jared, perhaps I will make you some runzas. Runzas, really, Kara? Hmm. Ooh, maybe even better. Maybe I could get my mom to make them because she does oh. a better job than I do. Oh, Kara's mom. Wow. She makes amazing food too. You know, like Jared, had, we will make lucky. runzas for you. I know you're a lucky guy. <laughs> I know what I'll do. So, um, I think Saturday during the meeting, you guys get like a box lunch or something like that. Um, I will put the runzas in the oven and bring them. Yeah, no hotel fiasco this time because I will be using my damn oven. So, oh, yes. I forgot about that. Yes. So <laughs> Use your we'll, oven. We'll do them Saturday for lunch. Yes. Oh, man. Everyone's going to be so spoiled, Kara. <laughs> They're never going to want to leave Minnesota. No, and there's so much to see and do. Uh, I mean... You know, so if people do want to come earlier, they want to stay late. There is a ton to do. Like I can list off so many spectacular restaurants for you to go to, like truly insane bars, like that you will have the best time ever at. Yes. Um, the botanical gardens are open, which That's are great. beautiful. So if you want to jog or walk or, you know, anything like that, you want to do some fitness or, you know, you just want to have some downtime. Um, we can hit the botanical gardens. There's the Minnesota zoo, which is now open and incredible. I mean, I could list things all day. All I could do long. this all day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you are the hostess with the mostess, honestly. Yeah. Well, and I mean, we have, we have a bar that we could go to and, um, you can get your drinks and get food and you hop on the Ferris wheel and the Ferris wheel is our, our tables. What? <laughs> I've never done that. I'm like, let's, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's all kinds of fun things that we could do. Oh my God. This is going to be amazing. I just want it to be like this weekend. <laughs> Because I can't wait. Those people are the best. We're going to have so much fun. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. It'll be a lot of fun. My brain just stopped because I'm like thinking about Runza's and a Ferris wheel. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put together a sheet of super fun, amazing things for you to do and experience. Uh, And I will get that out to um, people who are going to be coming. So 
Yes. And I will say, um, I'll plug Kara. Like, if you ever want somebody to help you plan a trip or um, fun things to do in, in a city, she finds everything. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, I just want to win the lottery and go, Kara, where should we go next? And then she'll go, I have a notebook. And then yes. <laughs> you're like, holy God. <laughs> Let me look up my Google Doc on that city. <laughs> I know. I'd be like, if we if we could just win the lottery, we could just do this. I'm like, where do you want to go now? Well, in my book, we're we're to Paris now, so let's go do that. What's this? Oh my god, that's hilarious! The only faction we, we don't have. Really... No, we don't. Oh. We have, have... Ri- we have original pancake house. Original pancake house is good. Um, Panic and- uh, Denny's. 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 Denny's is okay. Um, Denny's and IHOP. What was the place? Oh, it wasn't waffles. Uh, it was like the the like the breakfast burritos, the size of your head, and, and that kind oh, of stuff. Yeah, There's a lot of yeah. giant food places. Yes, RJ people. Riches. RJ Riches, like crazy giant vats of food. Well, so and food. oh, I should tell people. So in my town, if you are into waffles, and this oh, yeah. may make the Waffle House caucus this may appease them oh i know what you mean so we have a place called the buzz in burnsville and they have well over 100 different kinds of waffles that you can have and you can even get them vegan or you can get them gluten-free as well and i do mean they have like every kind you can think of they have one that has um like hot dogs Cooked into it and then oh, they, pour, they pour chili on top so it's oh, like a, it's a chili, chili dog guy. waffle i was just like going you're not selling it if you're like it has hot dogs on it i'm like i don't want that one <laughs> one of my favorites has um white chocolate chips oh my god and cream cheese and chicken and cranberries holy hell that's and amazing it, and that's not all that's and not then all. it has this insane raspberry sauce on top that sounds so good freaking unreal that shit is delicious they have another one it has brown sugar and bacon in it oh yeah bacon and like sweet and salty that's like the best combo oh my god I, i had one that had last time i had one and it had god what all was in it but it had jalapenos you know, oh I love jalapenos. Part of me wishes it was like a bar. So it was we hot could... and it was sweet and it was salty and it. Ah! I want to kind of go to a place that you could get drinks and then also get a giant waffle. I know. I know. And they need a liquor like, license. If they did, I would never leave. I'd also kind of look like Job of the Hood after a, a, a week, I think. I'd be like, oh. where's a Wookiee? Oh. <laughs> Yes. So I will include that place in my list. And if you're into cigars, right next door to it is a place called The Burn. And you can not just buy a cigar there, but they have like a um, like a lounge that you can try out different cigars and stuff. So so. so you're saying if somebody likes waffles and cigars, this might be like their idea of heaven. Yes. (laughs) Yes. It's not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I I went off the rails because I wanted to hear about waffles, but. Yes, that sounds yes. amazing. And I and I think we're going to have so much fun showing people around and I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Yep, most definitely. And so the hotel that they're going to be at is on the Bloomington Strip, which unfortunately is, so it's very convenient to the airport. Oh. You can also get a shuttle to Mall of America. But yeah. the unfortunate thing is you are in a food and bar desert. Like there is nothing around there. Yeah. There's a crap ton of hotels. And no restaurants and no bars, like anywhere around it. Um, I the that. hotel restaurant will be open by then. They said they will be open. So that's definitely an option. Um, in the hotel but, restaurant. Mm. Yeah. But never waste no stomach space on hotel food. This, this is what, this is a thing that Kara and I have, have agreed on in our life that if you're at a convention, at a conference, at an event, you don't just eat at the hotel, restaurant, and bar. It's not ever good enough for the price. Exactly. And, you know, there'll be um, 
there will be Minnesota party members there. And so we will have our cars there. Um, we are happy to give you rides to amazing places and fun things to do. So yes. we, will, we will be good hosts and we're very excited for all of you to come. Oh my God, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. And I, I think we're going to have a really fun time with all of those guys. And I yes. think they're going to love it. I mean, people get a little scared because they think Minnesota is all winter. I'm like, guys, you're coming in like, what is it, September? Is it like, yeah. yeah. So September is nice in Minnesota. You don't come in January or February. Although I'm just going to tell you all, like bring a sweatshirt. Yeah, I know. I mean, we're like, oh, it's so warm. In, in September, we're all like wearing shorts, but people from California would be like in their parkas, maybe. <laughs> I'm like, yes. it's so nice. <laughs> it's 60s. And they're like, it's freezing. Yeah. I'm dying. <laughs> oh, my God. Jared says he's looking forward to the trip. Six years. It's too long. We are going to have a fun time. We're going to have a fun time, Jared. I promise it will be fun. Yeah. Yeah. So see, I mean, lots of, oh, so much good news, so much good news, so much like great spectacular things happening now. I love it. I love it. And I'm, I mean, like, and I've been watching all the coverage of Joe Jorgensen's bus trip. Right? Every city she's going to like those, that city, like they cover her and, and I think they're amazed by who's showing up at her campaign stops and same with spike as well. Yeah. Um, he's getting a lot of coverage as well on his campaign stops. And I think reporters are going there and they're going there with a certain expectation of what the candidate will be like, what they're going to hear. And also they're going to be, um, you know, it's going to be like um, white bro basement dwellers as, yeah. as the people showing up at the rally. And they're finding that that is not at all, what it is. And so they're writing these really positive pieces and you can tell the reporters are, are extremely pleasantly surprised, not just by the candidate, but by the size of the crowd and the makeup of the crowd that is there and, and the diversity in every way you could think of of the crowd, you know, like former party they were, whether they weren't even involved in politics anymore, or, you know, age or, you know, whatever that demographic is they're very surprised. So the coverage has been spectacular. I've had um, lots of variety. I have um, tons of friends on Facebook that have different backgrounds and political beliefs. And I think the most interesting thing to me lately is seeing uh, like uh, at least a few of them going, you know what? I, I went to check out Joe Jorgensen because, you know, I'm not really pleased with Donald Trump. I'm not uh, very pleased with uh, Biden either. Um, and I saw her and I am very impressed. And you know what? I think I'm going to be voting for her. And I'm like, what? Like people who've been like Democrats forever, <laughs> people who've been yes. Republicans forever. Yes. And we're really amazed by how together and smart she is. And Qualified yeah, and, and wonderful. And qualified decent. and amazing. Yes. And a nice person on top of that. So, and not like a creeper, you know? <laughs> and Spike, I mean, he is just energizing people that normally would not give yes. the the time of day. I tell you, um, there's a lot of young people that are very excited about him. And I think Maple's in a fight. Is she? Do we need to stop the show? You need to save your no, cat? No, resolve it. You know, I'm, um, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, what is that I hear? A segue into this. I've been following Kara's Facebook and um, her cat, her campaign manager, Mabel, has been um, having nighttime visitors at Kara's house. And um, these cats come up onto their little walkway. And um, Mabel is a tough brawler cat. And she's yeah. kind of off. But I think it's got to be going down. Can you see out your window? Like, are they fighting? I can hear them. Oh my god! I can't I can hear, hear them. I can hear the screaming. Oh my god! Do you think Tracy will go take care of it? No, he's playing video games. You probably didn't even hear it. Okay. Um, I hope she's okay. Thoughts and prayers. Shit is going down. Well, you know the the thing is, yeah. I'm not worried about your cat. 
I know. Well, I know. Flower. I'm worried about Buttercup. Buttercup is a, a delicate flower, and I don't know why she wants to be friends so hard with Mabel, but, you know. Buttercup does want to be friends. She really wants to be friends with Mabel, and Mabel is just having none of it. I mean, she turns into instant jerk, and she's, like, screaming, at, you know, the whole... Well, She's territorial. She knows she's got a good deal. She's got like the best cat parents a person could have. Gets fed whenever she wants. Has a good life. Is well taken care of. Lots of kisses. And you know she might in her little kitty brain which is like a walnut. um, She might be like this cat's trying to take it all from me. You know um, you might have to carry the show for just two minutes. Go save your cat. Oh my god. I'm going to just bring Mabel inside. Sounds good. Sorry. Yes, Sorry. don't don't let your cat get hurt. Take off your headphones. <laughs> okay. So Kara's cat goes outside. My my two cats are inside cats. Um my boy cat tries to fight everyone that comes near our house. So we have um the windows open in the summer and um little boy cat sits there and he hisses and fights. I think the little girl cat's very excited because he's kind of a jerk. So she, she like tr- get, gets into the window and like wants to make friends with whoever is out there. And boy cat's so territorial. He throws her out of the window and then he fights and then she gets mad and crazy. So like most of our cat fights in our house are between the two cats I, I own that are here. So I think that, Okay, so what's the update? I was just telling them about my cats. Or usually, don't they're indoor cats. They don't fight, but um, they fight each other. They don't fight outside cats. So, so. Um, Mabel is victorious. Um, she Always. has once again, although I don't think it was um, Buttercup. I think it was Jim, um, who is a would-be boyfriend of Mabel's. Um, but she has successfully, yes, she has successfully <laughs> driven him off and she doesn't want to come in cause she wants to do kind of a little, little victory lap. She's like, you ain't coming in. I am up as hell. Yeah. She's <laughs> extremely pleased with herself and she's just like, ah, no, nah, I got this. I'm good. So she's sitting no. downstairs by staring out the window. No, she's, she's still outside. She wouldn't oh, come in. Geez. Well, you know, I wouldn't mess with that cat. She got, she all claws. She all claws. Yeah. I've had it where she just got startled by something and she was sitting there cuddling with me and all of a sudden she was like, Rrr, like something scared her. And I'm like, oh my God, get the nails out of me. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> yes. She's a little deadly, you know, I wouldn't want to be another cat fighting her. She's kind of a dick. She kind of a dick, but I, uh, she's very cute and sweet too. You know, I mean like, okay. Here's the thing, like my my little boy cat wants to give me little kisses, and and like my husband thinks that's the weirdest thing in the world. But then now he's trying to get it from the cat. But um, Kara's cat totally, she like leans into Kara and she's like, mm. so yes. he totally kisses my boy cat. It's not like it's more just like he goes like this because he thinks that's what kissing is is just push your face up by us and you just like hold it there. But she's like, hmm. So, I mean, that cat totally loves Kara and, you know, she would fight. I, I can totally see her fighting off these cats thinking I'm protecting my household. Because probably. I'm- She's probably thinking, my God, these <laughs> monkeys suck. They just let whomever come up here. I have to protect the colony. What yeah. the hell? They are totally ineffective. Their teeth suck. They don't have shit for claws. They would never be able to defend the household. It's up to me. <laughs> That's what she says. <laughs> She's a tough run. I give her that. But good. Good for Mabel. Yes. Is, is she mentally prepared for campaign season? You know, she, she is. Um, mostly by sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Somebody's got to be sleeping during campaigns. God. <sighs> that sure is shit isn't me. <laughs> oh, no doubt. <laughs> it, uh, until november it's going to be a uh, uh, interesting time <laughs> yeah yeah it is it is oh so um the the geek news that we have yes. not lp related but geek news we talked about that 
is um our one of our favorite shows on television last year was The Mandalorian. Yes. Has Baby Yoda. Sorry. We're looking at Kira's tummy. <laughs> Did you get it? Oh, yay! Baby Yoda riding backwards on an egg, baby Yoda. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the reason we're talking about Baby Yoda is because the Mandalorian was announced today that um, they have uh, Emmy nominations came out. And yeah. they, uh, Disney got 19 nominations total for um, for shows that they have um, from this last year. Yeah. 17, I think, out of all of those was for The Mandalorian. So it was a, it's a huge success, all the nominations. And, and I think in October, it's coming back. So we only got a couple more months to go. We get a big Yoda fix. I will say, um, my husband and I are so crazy for Baby Yoda. We bought like uh, a Baby Yoda statue that um, it's like it looks like the real thing. So I can't wait. But it's pre-ordered so far back that it probably won't come until like the next series comes out in October. So I'm probably going to buy it. What'd you get? What'd you get? Although I did not get this, a friend of mine bought it and sent it to me. What? It's a baby Yoda tiki mug. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this baby little Yoda. ears. Oh my God. I love baby Yoda hard. You know, our friend, uh, John, who we had on the show not long ago, posted a really cute video of baby Yoda, but it's like, um, the, the it's like the, I love you song. And it's like this little kid singing it. And whenever I watch that baby Yoda video where it has like the clips of baby Yoda with that damn song, I almost cry every damn time. It's so cute. Whereas somebody is like their small child doing the same thing. I'm like, man, it's cute. Fine. But baby Yoda. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what it is. It's like the combination of cute, like, uh, like cat cute and like small child cute. And so it's, it's probably the best creature in the universe. The most appealing to everyone. So how's this new drink? <laughs> I haven't tried it yet. Oh so. God. So, Oh, um, so I'm going to be doing something tomorrow, uh, that I haven't done since. February. Murder a man? <laughs> no, but okay. <laughs> I could. <laughs> Sorry, that's where my brain went. I'm going to a movie. All oh, right. Is that tomorrow? Yeah. That's tomorrow. So um, I think it was the AMC movie theaters. So AMC, AMC movie theaters are opening tomorrow. And right. so... Tomorrow they're they're showing um, you know old movies right yeah. second run movies that kind of thing but the tickets were only fifteen cents oh that's cheap so and we're seeing it in IMAX <gasps> and it's gonna be fifteen cents now it is a totally shitty shitty movie that we're going to it is shitty shitty what like is it? Awful. Um, it is a Vin Diesel movie it is God what was that one that came out bloodshot bloodshot that's what it is oh i haven't seen that one yet so tracy has seen it and he's like it's terrible oh my God, it's awful. and i, I said it. well i'm like maybe we have a few cocktails first and he goes then you'll just be he goes then by the end of the movie you'll just be kind of like disappointed and slightly hung over <laughs> <laughs> you know but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that makes it fun <laughs> it be a movie I know. I'm so happy. I'm I'm excited. So uh, on Friday night they start the new movies, but I didn't see a movie that I particularly wanted to see on Friday. The new one coming up. But um, but they have. I think there's one releasing on the 28th and another one on September 4th or something like that. So there are movies that I do want to go see, Um, and I think they have to be at 30 percent of capacity. Oh man. Um, but oh, we do have an AMC. Yeah, but movie theaters are doing kind of a kind of a an amazing thing. So 
you know, movie theaters make the majority of their money really from concessions, right? Right. You know, selling the pop and the popcorn and all that kind of stuff. So um, they are noting that you have to wear a mask, of course, you know, during because, the movie or because you- during the movie, like when you go in, because it's indoors, right? Yeah. This is Minnesota. You have to abide by the, the mandate, right? So it's indoors. Unless you're eating or drinking something. So eat and drink things the whole time. Everyone is going to be buying concessions. So they'll be at 30%, but I can guarantee you everyone is going to be buying concessions. I think I I would just go and it doesn't even matter what movie it is because I I really just want to see movies. I love movies. And I'm really, I would be really sad if we lose movie theaters because of this. I know, I know. And, you know, other movie theater chains are starting to open back up too. And I know a bunch of movies were ready to be released and had their scheduled dates. So even though a lot of movies haven't, like new movies aren't, you know, we had a little bump in schedule. There's this backlog of movies that they didn't release to streaming because you know some of them they released to streaming but you had to pay almost like 30 bucks or whatever to watch them um but they so they didn't release them and so they have a they have a backlog of new movies so it'll be interesting to see them come out that bill and ted movie with keanu is coming out in a couple weeks i think or september what is this all the bats i don't know who is that? Sylvia? What's with the bats? <laughs> is that Sylvia? Oh, it's Michelle. Let me see. I'm going to look. I have to, because uh, it's not showing it. Oh, it's Laura. Laura Lane. Okay. I don't understand. Oh, the and Laura, she's the one that did like all that good work um, in Alabama and spearheaded their petitioning no. and all that kind of stuff, which congratulations on getting Joe Jorgensen and Spike on the ballot. Thank you very much, Laura. And I will tell you, Laura has been doing fantastic work in Alabama. She has been an excellent chair. And it says hi. Good, good things yeah. are coming out of Alabama. I will tell you, they are getting organized and they are doing really good things. So I'm really glad. Oh, and she says it was it's, really a team effort. It is always a team effort. But you know what? You have to have someone you know, taking a leadership position. um, And you've been doing that. So that's one of our libertarians copying good. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Definitely. Yes. Cheers to you. Oh man. That is awesome. But yeah. So don't make me blush. (laughs) And then, 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 Yes, that's awesome. I, I'm I'm a little jealous about your movie thing because I um, am a super movie buff. Region 7. Going to join Region 7? What's oh, that? I think Jared's trying to poach on Alabama. Don't poach. Well, at least not publicly. Don't let them know. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you spot talent, though, I understand it. You're like, mm-hmm. come to us. Come help us. She's like, we are reason seven. We are. <laughs> Dirt. <laughs> anyway. So, um, yes, I'm hoping to see the Bill and Ted new movie. Um, although I will say, um, I still think uh, Keanu Reeves looks better with a beard. That's just my opinion. <laughs> you know, I, so I watch about anything that Reeves is in. Oh, I, I think he's I think he's an awesome person and I want his movies to always do well and I want him to have money and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um I don't think I can bring myself to watch that. I know movie. that movie looks so dumb, but I'm gonna see it anyway. I don't even care if I love him. Hated the first one. Hate it's hated, so dumb. Hated. It's like a almost like a stoner movie, but oh, they're fighting with our comments. I'm just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, good. Like, come on, keep it clean, people. No fighting. <laughs> We're all in this together. La, la, yeah, la. I don't. I don't think I can watch that movie. So I, I, I will probably watch it. Um, 
I mean, here's the thing. I love George Carlin in, in the original. And now that he's gone, I don't think that void can be filled. And I think it's, it's fun and it's going to be interesting to see it, but it seems like something that's, I don't know the time for it may have passed. Yeah. So we'll so see. A friend of ours is getting ready to do a movie madness night again. Ooh, yeah. Um, and so what they do and like, and I love this idea and I have a fun time when she hosts it and we have a really good time and it is, um, you know, I, I also think it would be fun if libertarians and other parts of the country did this as well. And maybe they do. Um, so they host movies and the movies have some type of liberty or libertarian theme to them. Oh, cool. um, so, I mean, of course, like oh. one that stands out is like V for Vendetta. So, you know, something like that, right? Something yeah. that has this, you know, this theme to it. And so, you know, she sets a date for it and says, this is when it's going to happen. And everyone says what movies they'd like to see and then we vote on them and then it's like a full day and evening of of movies and just hanging out with liberty people and you know having having good food because it's a potluck and um and i love that so i think that entertainment is you know whether it's books or whether it's movies or games i think that's one of the best areas to get a liberty message across because when you're talking politics and that kind of stuff people are automatically in a defensive you know they're like you know they're not going to take that information in right their brain is kind of closed off and they're like wait a minute I'm going to filter this but when people are taking in entertainment when they're taking in fiction right right like you know they're reading a book whatever they're totally open to the message and they're willing to jump into that world. Right. So whether it's it's a TV show or a movie, whatever. And so they're extremely receptive to libertarian messages and themes at that point. So I would love to see more, um, you know, more libertarian entertainment, more libertarian art, whichever that is, you know, whether it's sculptures and paintings or books or whatever that is, I would love to see more of that going out into the world and people taking that message in. I've I've always loved that. Um, I know uh, my work with the Agorist Writers Workshop, we've done a lot of writing that's Mm -hmm. celebrated authors, um, a, a little bit of a libertarian spin. And I love that, but you know, um, there's so many opportunities in other creative areas that people could reach out. You could do music, you could do poetry, yeah. you could do art. Yeah. Like, don't don't stop there. Just keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and with those Agorist Writer um, workshop books, um, before COVID, when I was traveling yeah. quite a bit, I would buy those books and I would leave them at airports. I love that. Um, I would always bring them, uh, we'd go down to Florida and places we'd stay, we'd like leave a book, you know, like you could take mm-hmm. a book, leave a book. I'd always bring yep. extras and leave one because, and then I figure people would read it and maybe they get into it. Exactly. Exactly. So. That's not a bad yeah. idea. Little subversives everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so towards the end of every show, we yeah. always do one awesome thing. And so we ask people watching what was one awesome thing that happened in your life this week that you would like to share? And we share our awesome thing as well so that we can, you know, celebrate together, like celebrate the good things together. So, you know, if you put into the chat what your awesome thing is, um, that would be fantastic. And we can all share it together. And then Heather and I can say what our one awesome thing thing for the week was oh my god you know um this is a crazy week i know for you and me but um it's back to school time for a lot of people including myself and i work in a college so um my awesome thing this week is i've um got things set up for the the fall semester i made like our whole network 
um, was kind of being wonky and I fixed it and it's working beautifully. So all these kids who are working at home, um, they're going to have great resources. They're going to have things set up so I can help them if they want at distance or in person. I mean, it's like so set up and I've been working on getting what's called open educational resources. So like free textbooks and free books and videos. So that way kids who, uh, kids, they're adults. Um, yeah. If uh, people want materials, but they can't afford them, um, they can get all the materials that they need for free. So I'm trying to hook people up and I'm working with a great person on campus. So we've been working hard to try to get it. So if you need free stuff, you can do almost everything you want for free. And I'm trying to get more and more of that in the world. That is awesome. Oh. So my my one awesome thing might seem kind of weird. I, I think I, I'm already going to like it, but especially if it's weird. So, <laughs> so we got you know, one of those diffusers, essential yeah. oil diffusers, and I love it. And so um, Amazon had like a lightning deal on these really high rated essential oils. And so I got an entire box of them, like an oh, assortment cool. of all different kinds. And so each day, according to my mood, whether it's morning or, you know, whatever, you know, like I do the lavender when I'm getting ready to go to bed and I just you know, ease into sleep, um, you know, a little peppermint in the morning, yeah. some, some grapefruit if I need my mood a little bit. Yeah. So, um, I've just been enjoying the hell out of that. I, I know that's not like I a, love it, a big thing, but no, you know, what's weird is like, I really you like have, it. You, you clean your, like everything with this almond, um, cleaner that smells amazing. And so now I'm like, I've been like obsessed with that. And so I'm like, I, I like I ordered some of it because I'm like, it smells so good. I want my house to smell like that. Yeah. So it's just like, I know what oh you mean. Because your house smells like a bear claw. I know. It makes me so hungry. <laughs> but it's so good. And I'm like, you know, everything doesn't have to smell like lemons or citrus. It can yeah. have other smells that make you feel homey. I mean... And that, that's like a sensory thing, right? Yeah. yeah. It makes you feel good. So I think that's a totally great thing. I love that. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. So I don't see anybody saying they're having good stuff. I'm, I'm like, I know you guys are having good things. You could share it, right? Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> like no judging. I mean, it just seems like there's everybody focuses on the bad but there's I know, good, yeah. Good things every week, every day, there's something good. And I mean, I'm having a hard week because back to school time is crazy pants for faculty and and like I'm sure for parents getting ready to send your kids back has oh been my like God. scary. But like you gotta hook on to those things that make you happy and like suck all the joy into it <laughs> right into your face. Yes. <laughs> Like and it, well, and I'm crossing my fingers. I can't say what my awesome thing hopefully will be for next week. We'll see. There's Hold good on. things every week. I know, like you don't want to jinx things awesome. because if you say it, then it like you know, like yeah. So I know there's some good things, but I mean, like already having like the the Libertarian Party National coming here. It's so much good to look forward to. I am so stinking excited about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I just think, like, there's some amazing things that have happened. And I've been really happy. Yeah. And so, like, I know for it's, people are like, how can you be happy? And they're like, you know what? What's the alternative? Seriously. Right. I got to focus on the good things. Either that or I'm going to sit with my cats and just stare at cats for, like, hours. And they get sick of that shit. <laughs> They're like, yeah, um, I got stuff to do. <laughs> I I would get bit on my face if I did that. Yeah, I know. They, they eventually get tired of us. I mean, like... It's like they're very fickle creatures. It's either they want you or they don't. And if you try to, like, do it at the wrong time, then they get mad. So, can't do that, but... I, I am really happy and I'm just, I feel like one of my good things this week is always getting to be a part of sweet subversives and 
Um, no matter what kind of week I'm having, this is like probably one of the best parts yes. of my week. And it's right in the middle. How weird is that? It kind of like pushes you like, keep going, Heather. Keep going, Kara. It's okay. Because <laughs> it's hump day. Hump day. Bum, 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 bum. I know I drank too much today. But, <sighs> well, that's one of the problems is like you get stress is a weird thing. You know, it's good for you in a way because it motivates you and you know yeah. you're going to get stuff done. And it's very satisfying to get things done. But it also drains you. So you need to, like, find ways to keep going, you know. And that's yeah. why I was so happy about those essential oils. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm, I'm, my goal, I will say this out loud, is to, um, like, work on exercise as one of my outlets for being, like, happier, healthier Heather. Yeah. So a little, adding a little bit more and more of that instead of uh, Bear Claws and beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have that um, that uh, libertarian get fit Facebook oh, yeah. group um, because the idea is that we spend the intervening time between the two conventions, you know, focusing on our health and getting fit. I think it's a good so, idea. Yeah, so I mean, you could join that group and. Oh, I just need some motivation for it, and I think yeah. that would be the right kind of thing. You yeah. know, I'm not I'm not one of those people that need them to yell at me. I just need somebody to go, hey, how's it going? Hey, I did this. I'm like, I could do that. You know, like ideas instead of. Yeah. Because I, I took classes where I got yelled at and I'm like, F uh, this. Yeah. I don't need to get yelled at. I get yelled at at work and I get yelled at in life and I get yelled at on Facebook. I mean, I, I want somebody to go, go you. There's a like, lot you of don't yelling. Look at that. You keep going, girl. <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's one of those things that we all need. Oh, my God. It's almost like time already. How do we do that? I know. I know. Like we had like we have nothing to talk about. (laughs) We fill the time. (laughs) How do we do that? Uh, I don't know. But um, well, on that note. But yeah. And well, and Tracy knows what kind of day I am having if he comes home and there's the singing bowl music playing. He knows (laughs) It's been a very stressful day. Leave Carrie alone. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm trying to. I, I do put music on every day. I rock out. I know you have like your, your chill music, but for me to de-stress, I put on dancing music and I dance around and it helps me. So, I mean, you find what works for you, be it smelling good or music or a, a nice gentle well it, it, maybe not just you maybe your house or whatever the air kind of late in the day <laughs> or or go out in your garden and look at green living things you know yes. i mean there's so many ways just find what works for you and and work with that absolutely well it has been a super fun evening yes i love it i love getting to talk to all you guys this it's is awesome. so much good news so, so much, much good news, good news. And next week, hopefully more good news. It'll be awesome. So have a great week, guys. We love you. And we will see you next Wednesday in our hump day. So have a yes. great week. And see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> do, 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 do.